Deep in the Sierra Nevadas, two hardened outdoorsmen will go head to head in the first ever survival and evasion competition. Each contestant has 24 hours to survive, evade, and reach the endpoint without being captured. The hunter, supported by Grunt Proof Scouting Team, will be on his tail. Eric, an experienced backpacker and scout leader. Bill, a U.S. Army First Sergeant and Survivalist Instructor. Survivor has a 15 minute head start and the hunter got inserted right behind him. The race is on and they're both in it to win it. It's man versus nature versus man at the first ever Grunt Proof Survival Games. The Sierra Nevadas boast some of America's roughest terrain and harshest weather. Deep within this 28,000 square miles of Western Pioneers Dreamland, my team and I have discovered the perfect area to host the survival games. On the other hand, the beauty and wonder of this area also present the contestants with their very first challenge, and that is just getting to the site of the games. Just traveling to our location is an adventure in and of itself. day it is I know it's Wednesday and it's November 2021 we are off we are on our way to the 2021 Grump Proof Games it's gonna be cool let's do it it's time to uh, fuel up look at that puppy he's excited to get some Mickey D's fuel you want to win like a champion you gotta fuel like a champion Is this the snack box or the trash box? While Bill and Eric are en route, we have a lot of work to do. We've got loadouts, perks, and supply drops to prepare for the contestants, as well as just getting my place ready for guests. All the scrap must be sorted. Going over the loadouts, packing stuff, snacks and food. Jeffy's eating all the peanut butter. So these are the lovely gifts we got from Survival Box all the electronics so this monstrosity is the hunter's loadout he basically has an old lce style setup and he's gonna have everything he needs to do his job minimal support from each welcome to fresno the land of i don't know what <laughs> can't say i've ever been here maybe i haven't just don't remember but uh Mile, you will arrive at your destination. Terminal arrivals. What do we got? There he is. Don't mind me filming. Uh, no. I guess it's part of the job, That's right? That's right. <laughs> With the link up complete, they've already had a very long trip, and they even have much farther to go. Because our place is so remote and there's no cell service, we met the contestants down at the last spot of cell coverage to escort them up the mountain. What's up, dude? Gentlemen, how you doing? Hey, dude, you're huge. <laughs> you're gonna be easy to find out there. Hey, I should be easy to find in my white legs. Oh, yeah. 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 And they're still not even there yet. One last climb up a massive mountain and we will arrive at Grunt Proof HQ. And of course, the scenery makes the long trip well worth it. Upon arrival at my place, I am surprised with a gift from Eric and Bill. I wonder if they'll <laughs> let me keep it after the torment we're gonna put them so, through. Thank you. That's You're welcome, nice. bud. Thanks, guys. After getting settled in, the contestants are treated to a wonderful Thanksgiving dinner up at my family's place.
Now that chow is out of the way, it's time to get down to business. But either way, we'll switch out, take a little break, do a little reset, and then... The contestants receive a final in-depth briefing on how everything will go. Any other vehicle, any other person should be considered unfriendly. Yeah. So that's what you're carrying tomorrow. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> so I'll see if that fits. Following the briefing, the contestants will now receive their loadouts. Each loadout is very different. The hunter carries a lot more weight because his loadout is designed to keep him almost totally self-sustainable. The survivor, however, will be going out with the most minimal equipment possible. He is only carrying communications, tracking, and basic emergency equipment. Once all the business is taken care of, we get to hang out with a few drinks and get to know each other a bit better. This will be the last time we are all buddies before the competition begins. This might even be their last night of good sleep for the next four days. Good morning, folks. We are here. Where, where is this? What's this code name for his place? Eagle? Eagle. All right. Here we are. Here we are. We are at Randall's place. We're going to go up to Randall's parents and get some breakfast and uh, enjoy it because it could be our last could supper, last right? One. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it. While Eric and Bill get to enjoy a nice big breakfast and prepare themselves for the day, Jeff and I have a lot of work to do. We will have an entire tactical operations center set up at the end point. Everything must be loaded up and delivered to the site. Hey, All right. Look at these Tobies. To run a large operation like this, it requires a lot of equipment, and we are staged and ready to go. Got a full truck headed out to where the tactical operation control center is going to be, and it's setup time. The first step in setting up any talk is building a tent. Hey there. Hey. Hey there. How you doing, buddy? Not too shabby for an old grunt and an officer. Jeff and I have set up one of the best talks I've seen in a long time. Everything required to run the games, feed guys, and deal with emergencies is all located at the end point. With everything being set up and ready to go, it's time to alert the contestants that they are about to be moved. Playtime is over for Bill and Eric. They will be relocated to the talk and put into quarantine. Games are about to begin. It is go time. Uh, I'm just excited to find out what this is going to be all about. And um, although I guess I already have an idea. But just excited to get going. It's a great day to be in the woods. Good experience is always the unknown, right? So anytime you go out somewhere and it's planned event, you, you can kind of anticipate some of the answers to the to the test because you're kind of building it yourself. But here, you know, somebody else is building that test, so you don't know what you don't know in an unknown environment. So it's gonna be it's gonna be great to be operating someplace that I haven't done before. So it's gonna be awesome. All right. Yeah, it's uh, almost game time. Final count. Look at these guys. This is serious. We're no longer your friends. <laughs> The wilderness I'll be hiking through and I got to work my way back here to be safe so you can check out your gear do a final load on it you got fresh batteries extra batteries the contestants are greeted with their completed loadouts. They have one final PCC PCI to complete, 
make sure everything is set up exactly how they like it, and we'll conduct some final comms checks. Final countdown. So right now, we've got them in quarantine, locked up in the tent. They're not allowed to see anything else. And from this point, we've got some pump up music and also to kind of isolate them and mess with them a little bit so they can't collaborate. And uh, as the song's tempo increases, I'm gonna jack the volume up. So we're about 20 minutes out. Let's do this. Bring it through, uh, uh, undo this a little bit, and then bring it through there and they'll keep it secured. I know you're not supposed to help your enemy, but I mean, that would have been annoying. While the contestants are in isolation and getting pumped up, the Grunt Proof team steps off to their locations to get set up. Yeah, I'm at drop zone one. Scout will be coming down that road right there. Dropping the survivor off right in this area here, and he's on his own. As the contestants sit in isolation, prepare themselves, and listen to music, the anticipation builds. They have no idea what awaits them out there. As soon as I get word from my team that everyone is all set, it's time to go. Nine months of planning and rehearsal, and it all comes down to this point. Go time. Good luck, Hunter. Right on. Stay out there, buddy. Well, Let the games begin. Eric, as the survivor, will be inserted first. Ready? Ready. Last words? Uh, may the best man win, I guess. Eric has no idea where he will be inserted. A blindfold ensures he doesn't get to see the terrain on his way down. Time now. Good luck. insertion point is a good two miles line of sight all the way down to the bottom of a valley. It is also a 955 foot elevation change. However, given the circumstances of the game and how the terrain is, he will probably have climbed thousands of feet before the games are over. Based on Eric's experience in survival and evasion as compared to Bill's, Eric will receive a 15-minute head start. Shortly after Eric departs, Bill gets alerted to get ready to move out. The insertions will happen simultaneously because I'm going to drive Bill around the AO and insert him from a different direction. Hmm, here we go. Man, it smells good out here. I know I'm riding into certain doom, but wow, I love the smell of the woods. Doom? Why do I feel pending doom? This is silly talk. This is just a fun survival game between a couple of dudes that love the outdoors and have a thirst for adventure. I'm taking Bill in on another route just to ensure he doesn't get a good look at the terrain to gather intel for his time as a survivor tomorrow. Ready? Ready? The Grunt Proof team conducted a lot of rehearsals to ensure that a simultaneous and on-time insertion for both contestants went as smooth as possible. I had just a few moments to look at a map. I have no method or means to transcribe it. The only thing I know for sure is that the destination is up in the northeast corner of the property. I have no idea where I'm being taken to. Once Eric steps off the quad, his time begins. As both contestants head out into the field, the anticipation builds as they contemplate what awaits them during the games. The only thing they know about the area is what they gathered from a one minute viewing of the map. Wait a minute. What if Bill doesn't think this is a game? 
What if Bill is a little cuckoo in the cabeza and he starts having flashbacks to Nam and thinks he's hunting down Charlie? Holy smokes, I'm Charlie. So I'm gonna hit the ground running and I'm gonna find a natural line of drift. Something that's gonna funnel Eric towards his line of travel in order to reach his destination. Eric's ride of doom is over. The games have officially begun. Eric is recognizing the whole point of the blindfold. Between that and a 12 minute ride downhill on rough terrain with Jeff making a bunch of extra turns. You can't give me any hints, can you? He is completely disoriented and lost. glow sticks and my cordage knowing that he has a 15 minute head start eric does a quick loadout check on the ground this is smart because a lot of crucial information has been added to his kit emergencies though some gauze pads gopro issues don't need that radio okay i'll look at that later i just gotta get moving here your end point is northeast 43 degrees from your insertion point the only guidance the survivor receives is in which direction he needs to begin heading. Despite having a decent head start, Eric realizes that he needs to get moving. All right. That way. Shortly, he will have a highly trained and skilled hunter on his tail. Roger, I got audio. Both insertions go just as planned and rehearsed, and Bill gets inserted right on time. Step off, brother. That's your boundary. Step over and games are on. Good to go. Good luck, brother. Oh, yeah. The hunter is armed with the knowledge of which direction the survivor took off in. Very soon, he will begin to receive support and perks from his scouting team. Naturally, Bill wastes no time in going to work. We'll go over here and Shane can take another short security halt. We're at the insertion point, and Hunter is hot on his trail. Alrighty, both insertions complete. Survivor has a 15 minute head start, and the Hunter got inserted right behind him. They're both moving pretty quickly. We got a scout vehicle out there assisting the Hunter, and um, yeah, the race is on. I think they're both, uh, they're both in it to win it. I got 15 minutes to give myself as much distance as I can between Hunter and wherever. So I'm gonna work my way up to the top of this hill over here. Oh yeah. Survivor's here. Over. Games are on. Everything good? 
Yeah, I'm good. Just trying to make some distance here. Got you. I'm here if you need me. Thanks, buddy. I'm good. See ya. Extremely dry. You can tell that the extreme terrain is already taking its toll on the contestants. Hopefully that's slowing him down. With these cognizant of the noise. The elevation difference between the insertion point and their end point is only about 950 feet. However, given the circumstances of the games and the terrain they're going to be climbing on, they will both probably have climbed thousands of feet before the end of the games. Let's get up to this ridge up here. The odds of coming across ground spore and sign that Eric left is extremely slim to nil. So as we stopped here, we want to just look, especially out of the our peripherals, we'll catch motion. Bill is employing some great techniques. Anytime he stops to take a break, he is looking for light or motion, and he is listening for signs of somebody being in the area. A lot of times we, we get caught up in thinking that it's the, the noise discipline that's going to give us away, but more often than not, it reverts back to that that light discipline, whether it's a color, a shade. Many people would think Bill would just continue the sprint and just go stomping through the woods trying to find Eric. But as a hunter, Bill also has to recognize sound and light discipline. It's obvious Bill knows that time is on his side. There is absolutely no reason for him to rush through this process. Eric is the one who has the time limit and is also being watched and tracked. All Bill has to do is stay in the area of him and wait on him to make a mistake. I can get through here. Be careful. As Eric heads deeper into the AO, he begins to realize just how treacherous the terrain is. Not only will the elevation changes be a major challenge to him, but also just getting through the thick underbrush. This area has also been ravished by years of wildfires, drought, so there's all kinds of dead crap laying on the ground that you gotta climb over. It's either that, or you just walk through the wide open areas and risk the hunter or his scouting team catching you. There is a major trail and others scattered throughout the AO, but part of the rules are that Eric is not allowed to use the main trail. We do have plenty of ways of enforcing these rules. One of those is one of Bill's perks as a hunter. Once an hour, Bill's scout makes a run through the area and reports on anything he sees. So if Eric happens to be hanging out in the wide open or crossing or using a trail, he will definitely get seen and reported. And if you're thinking that perk is going to create some issues for the survivor, you couldn't be more correct. The scout team will also be providing harassment to the survivor in the form of psychological operations. Watch out down there. You're gonna get caught. Hey, do. Do this in my vault. Get out. Yes. Come in here. <laughs> support is on four wheelers. 
one of the hunter's perks is a reconnaissance drone so that he can try to locate the survivor or look for any kind of signs of life so that he knows in which direction to head. Bill gets a 10 minute drone flight. He gets to look over my shoulder and see if he can notice anything. I of course know exactly where Eric is, so I have to be careful so as not to put the drone right over his head. I'm giving Bill the opportunity to direct the drone into an area where he thinks Eric is, but I'm also not going to just give away Eric's position. The idea here is simply to give the hunter an overhead shot and see if he notices anything suspicious. Buzzing around. I can hear it. I can hear the drone. Hunter just got himself one of those perks. It's a good thing I decided to hang out under this bush for a bit. Oh, I can look out there. Oh, they're way. There's no way they're going to see me. It's just behind this pine tree on the left. I fly figure eights and circles and I go investigate any area Bill asked me to. But at least on this round, he has no luck with the drone. He needs to avoid these roads. Hey, survivor. I'm going to let him move forward. And then we're, uh, we're going to use this, this natural or man-made terrain feature push up to the east and then back to the north again you know Eric's heart is pounding listen to that Scott this is Hunter I'm gonna squat hold of my position for about five ten mics over Bill has received his latest intel update that the survivor is actually headed up behind him. So he's decided he's going to pop a squat and wait in ambush. Heading out for the first survivor supply drop. He's um, tucked away down in a valley, pretty steep grade. So I'm going to have to park near him and then um, to not give away his position, I'm gonna kind of flank him and come up behind him. Hey, survivor, I'm uh, headed out to you. All right, 30 minutes or less, or it's free, right? Ten four. <laughs> HQ, this is Survivor. Any chance I can get myself a uh, Hawaiian pizza with extra bacon on that? Throw on some onions too, please. I guess that's a no. <laughs> Eric is coming up on his first supply drop and seeing as how he is so close to the hunter, but he's not sure where he is. I'm actually going to move him to a different location. It's pretty tricky playing both sides of the coin here because I know where everyone is and I know what everyone is doing. But at the same time, I also have to kind of stay objective and not get anybody purposely caught. And that means anytime I'm going to meet the survivor, I have to use basic stealth tactics as well. Looking for our survivor. Get him a supply drop. Don't want to give away his position. You want to walk me into you? Of course I can see the survivor on the trackers we are using. The problem is with heavy foliage from both of us, it's really hard to pinpoint their exact location. So I have Eric go yeah, ahead and yeah. walk me in. You got a good hiding spot. To your left. Hey. He comes bearing gifts. Hopefully it's that pizza I ordered. It's probably like a Tootsie Roll or something. There he is. Hello, sir. How you doing? Have you seen some people in the woods? Not seen a soul. Just heard them. <laughs> All right. Pure protein. I'm loving it. This is awesome. I'm having a blast. Yeah, cool. <laughs> How close have I been to being caught? <laughs> uh, close. 
So after about four hours and a thousand calories burned, all Eric got was a measly 30 gram of protein okay. power bar. Lights. I need to take my time and get through. Through here a little bit safe, more safely. I know I'm pretty much heading this way back to HQ. So I'm gonna work my way up this, down this little ravine here over my way up carefully hopefully not make too much noise who knows where bill is i wish i could track him bill has tracked eric to within about 300 feet he's almost right on top of him All right, now I get out of here. eric's biggest challenge now is the terrain if you don't know what manzanitas are they can be just as bad and in some cases worse than briar patches or sticker brushes. Or in the infantry, we like to call them wait a minute vines. This area is littered with game trails and open areas. The problem is you will follow a game trail into a large patch of manzanitas and then it all of a sudden comes to a stop. So then you have to make a choice. Do you go back and box all the way around or do you try to push through and hope that it doesn't get worse? Well, in this case, for Eric, it got worse. Can I get down that? I wonder. Well, it's one way to find out. Little does Eric know, he is heading right for Bill. Bill is up in the high ground, just waiting for Eric to pop out of the brush. I can hear the radio again. That's either a bear or that's Eric. <laughs> Scott, this is Hiram. I lost visual contact. But he's moving like a bull in a china shop. So uh, north is definitely a no-go for you, and east is uh, the terrain's too bad, so I think we're going to have to push you west, hug a little bit southwest and head that way. Yeah, I copy that. Kind of about the way I made my way up here, so. He's, he's going, going back down. Say, he's going back down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate to do that to you, but if you head north, we get you busted, and uh, east is a little too tough. It's time for Eric's next perk, so we decided to give him some terrain and intel and basically tell him in which direction not to go. We also have an important supply drop for him, so we decide to move him around a little bit so as not to compromise his position. That means, unfortunately for Eric, he's going to have to go right back down a steep incline that he just spent an hour going up, and he's going to have to find his way back through some of the rough manzanitas. Whether Eric believes it or not, there is some method to the madness. We are helping him and keeping the games interesting at the same time, but of course it is still a little bit comical to us. Alright, that's great. Oh, man. <laughs> and now you're about now you're about to go back a third. Right there. <sighs> that's pretty thick. Yeah, this is Grizzly at base. Go ahead. I'm with the hunter. He is currently stalking the survivor. We might have a possible capture. Shortly after Eric's supply drop, he begins heading back toward the end point. We're not sure if he forgot or what, but he started heading right back into the area he was, which is where Bill has been sitting the whole time. Bill picks up on his movement and sound and begins to try to close with and get in there and capture him before sunset. All right. That's the plan. Again, still heading that way. That's the way I need to go. But it's where I turn the stick. There's a bit of a gully here. I thought about falling, but it's thick. 
I just hate to crawl through this stuff and then have it be thick again when you get at the top and not be able to move around. I have to belly crawl out of here. Let's see what we got. Let's climb up on this stuff here. Hopefully it doesn't break on me. Just this slight opening is good enough for Eric to be spotted. Eric has no idea that the hunter is about 200 feet line of sight from him and is looking down at him, watching his every move now. With no luck busting through, Eric decides to head back down the spur he had been fighting with for the last two hours. From there, he's going to get set up for the upcoming admin halt. Bill has been sitting on the high ground for at least an hour, just watching Eric screw around down there in the terrain. The problem is, he could not find a good route to get down there and capture him, and if he made the choice to box around Manzanitas and get down there, then he risks Eric slipping by him and getting up the mountain that he's been guarding. Bill did utilize his hourly scout perks and some assistance from us to try and flush out the survivor. But once Eric got stuck up in the Manzanitas and wasn't sure how to get out, he basically just hunkered down and waited for the noise to go down. So Eric did an excellent job not stressing out and getting himself caught. Again, we're at short halt. He's got uh, some tasks to go through, some survival-based tasks. Last time we saw him, again, was about 100 meters off to the east. And he ended up moving back to it towards the west, the southwest. Every now and then I can I can still hear him. And while he's been moving, I've been sitting, waiting, listening. Knowing that he has to move to the northeast. I expect now he's on this side of the brush. No matter what choice you make in this kind of situation, it's a gamble and there's a risk. So you have to be very intentional brush is loud so if he starts moving I'll start hearing him so that's where I need to continue to be patient move 10 15 feet stop and listen we're gonna let him get through this and hydrate up he's straight out in front of us somewhere it's already been a long tough day for both contestants now that nightfall is upon us and Eric still has about 14 hours left, things are about to get very interesting. Now if you were thinking, oh 24 hours, that's no big deal, these guys can basically just race through the woods and find the endpoint. Well you'd be wrong, because we decided to mitigate that ahead of time. We have chosen two survival related tasks that each contestant must complete. The purpose of these tasks is for the survivor to demonstrate their knowledge and proficiency in these critical tasks, and in case it comes down to it later, their scores in these tasks will be used as a tiebreaker. The skills chosen for this game are build a shelter and a fire in under 10 minutes. They are supplied with a few items to complete these tasks, but of course, as within any survival situation, they will have to improvise and adapt to make it happen. We will be grading their performance in these tasks against many different standards. Those criteria will not be shared with the public. And lastly, just to avoid setting up the survivor for failure, we have called for an admin halt for them to complete this task and also give the survivor some chow. It's been a long day, he's burned thousands of calories and all he received were a few power bars and now he finally gets to sit down and eat a hot MRE. Give me more time to get these 
guys up. Let's see, so you put the sleeve. I've got some of these at home and I've used them before. I don't eat them as often as these uh, military do. He's been handed a randomly picked and field stripped MRE. Whatever he gets, he gets, and it's up to him if he wants to eat it or not. And rotten potatoes, ice cold. Something that can last 25 years and taste that good. I just said for the hell of it, all of it. I got this spaghetti heating but Once the time limit is up, whether Eric has finished the task or not, the games are back on and the hunter is released. So the survivor has to make a critical choice. Does he sit at his nice camp and enjoy his five-star meal on us? Or does he pack up camp, dump his fire, and head out into the woods to avoid capture? Being dead in the water on the hunt, Bill also takes advantage of his downtime to refill on some supplies and also get some rest. As soon as we tell him it's game on, he thinks he knows where Eric is and he's going to take off in that direction. Despite things being pretty calm right now, the tension is in the air because we all know how things are going to go once we set Bill loose again. <laughs> That's a pretty big survival fire. So it's game on. Yeah. Bill's all the time. The survivor's time is up. All tasks are complete. Eric actually did a fantastic job and had plenty of time to eat. I go ahead and alert him that the games are back on. He receives his next perk, which is a little bit of terrain guidance and intel on the enemy. Now Eric needs to decide on his next course of action. I'd like to take a nap, but it sounds like Bill, like you said, he's on the hunt. I don't know if I have much of an option if I want to survive. I probably have to leave my lean-to here, maybe take my blanket and run out there and hide. I don't know how he'll probably take advantage of my cool fire and my, my lean-to, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the strategy here is to... I've left, I've left my lean-to and my little fire there kind of off the side of the road. My hope now Bill is going to come and try and search me out. Now Randall and Roy are actually leaving right now. This is how it looks like. But my hope is that Bill comes down the road here, sees my lean-to and my fire, thinks he's captured me, and then he just sets up. But I still feel like I'll make too much noise coming down the road. I think maybe if he went down there and started hanging out, and I just got on that road and started bust to move back to HQ, I'd be good. I don't know. We'll see. And of course, as soon as Bill gets released to hunt again, we start to have comms issues. That's standard for basically all operations, which is why you always plan for redundancies. So we're going to get a new radio down to Bill and get him going. So we got a radio malfunction, so they're going to go ahead and switch them out. They're able to work if we're close, but any kind of distance between us, I'm able to read them, but they're not able to read me. So we'll see if we can't get this figured out and go find me some Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 45 minutes to an hour since the sun's gone down. It's absolutely clear, clear sky, which means temperatures are going to drop a little bit more. There's nothing to insulate the heat. So thinking of layers and how to stay warm. Moving is the easiest answer, but obviously moving at night. Think about the size, the shape, the slope, the elevation, and orientation of the train that we're in right now. Eric still has to move to the northeast and depending on what kind of perks he may have been given, he's either held up for the night or he, I mean, with this amount of time, he could be long gone. So again, it's a gamble. Try to figure out and think of 
what's the most likely course of action that he would have taken and then base my course of action off of that. Eric remembers his briefing, and he knows that unless we tell him we are coming to meet him, he should consider any vehicle or other personnel to be unfriendly. So, of course, hearing quads a couple hundred feet from him on the road means he needs to keep his head down and not assume that we are friendly. I was, I'm pretty sure I heard Bill's voice. Hunter is on that quad, and he's searching for me. One of Bill's special perks is that once during the 24 hours, he is allowed to get a free relocation within the AO. The timing works out perfectly and he had been saving it this whole time. Before the halt, he was pretty sure he knew where Eric was. So as soon as we got the comms issued sorted out, he decided to use that perk and get a ride down to Eric's campsite. You gonna smell the fire. Here it is. There's his shelter. The hunter has discovered Eric's camp. Smelled the fire and came right down. Now he's inspecting the area on the hunt. come and drink beer and sit around a fire with us. All you gotta do is come to the megaphone or the light. It really doesn't matter which one. You are gonna get caught tonight. Don't worry about it. Well, for now, I'm just gonna sit here and look at the stars and enjoy this piece. Because I'm not sure what to do next. Kinda, I think I kind of locked myself in here. I was afraid to go further up. But uh, I should have. I was afraid to get caught. For now, staying put is the only option Eric has. He chose not to make a run for it earlier, and now that Bill has found his camp, he's circling all over that last known location looking for him. If Eric were to jump off right now and make a run for it, if he didn't kill himself running through the brush in the dark, he would make so much noise, Bill would be onto him in a heartbeat. Bill is implementing a methodical and proven method to find Eric. He's using S patterns and 360 circles and slowly working his way out from Eric's campsite. So unless Eric does make a run for it, Bill will eventually walk right on to him. Back at HQ, the rest of the team is preparing for a rest cycle. Jeff has first watch on the tracker and he gets to watch the action live on the screen.
It's about eight hours into the first game, and Bill is right on top of Eric. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good job, mate. At just about eight hours and 40 minutes, Eric has been captured. Both contestants have done an amazing job. So tired. I bet. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, it was fun. What a good day. That was. Awesome, man. I don't mind getting caught, <laughs> especially if that means I get to go uh, sleep in a sleeping bag. Where are you sleeping? I don't know. Was I sleeping now? No. I've been watching you guys this whole yeah. time, and I'm just like, do I run? Do no, I? No, I think you did right. I'm like, yeah, I just gotta stay right. quiet. So was the through night one of his perks? Yeah. Okay. Figured that's what it was. So it's like, dang. And uh, here comes the through night. Like we said, they get a little. All three guys. Yeah. <laughs> True statement. <laughs> yep. We're uh, having a good old camp out over here. <laughs> While the contestants get to enjoy the moment and relax and all the pressure is off, it's time to call HQ and alert them that the first game day is complete. Eric has done an amazing job. He really tried to use the terrain to his advantage during all of his movements. And despite his lack of formal training and evasion, I would say he impressed all of us out here today. Bill has won for the day, but the games are not over. Bill will be the survivor tomorrow, and given his experience and training in these areas, we are going to lay it on him hard. Eric being captured with about 15 hours left in the games means that we get to pack up the talk, set up a campfire, and just hang out and enjoy the evening together. That also means the contestants will get plenty of rest before tomorrow's games. It's another beautiful day in the mountains, and we have the perfect weather for another survival event. Good morning, Commander. Good morning. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning. Retired. That's Mr. <laughs> That's Mr. Sergeant Retired. Survivor. Radio. Yeah, works. Good go. Turn on when you're ready battery seeing as how this is the first competition like this nobody else has done this we are going to try something different today instead of a static talk up on top of a hill we are going to use one of our off-road vehicles as a roving talk this will mitigate some of the comms issues we were having and it'll also put one more vehicle in the AO for the survivor to be aware of these six square miles of extremely rough terrain don't look like much from up top, but it almost killed the contestants yesterday. Now let's see how they perform today. Gather around, children. Bill's upset because he doesn't get to lead the brief. Or he's happy because he doesn't have to. <laughs> so it's going to be the same with the perks and supply drops. It's time for the final briefing for game two. It's basically the same setup as yesterday. Bill has 24 hours to reach the point we are standing on. He is supported by the HQ team in the form of a few perks and supply drops. Let's try to keep the radio checks every hour. Eric is supported by a scout team with all kinds of special perks to help hunt down the survivor. Bill only gets a 10 minute head start today and he will be inserted at a completely different point than the contestants were yesterday. 10 minutes later, Eric will be inserted right behind him and the only intel he gets is in which direction the survivor took off. Last thing to do is get some final comms checks with each contestant and then the games are on. All right, good, All right. mount up. Do it. Very similar to yesterday, you know, you don't know what you don't know. It's gonna be a little bit more intentional on on movement and trying to be a little bit more deliberate maybe a little bit slower than I was moving yesterday so it's gonna be it's gonna be a hell of a day I think today will be a little bit easier for me because I'm not gonna have to hide so much 
I get uh, the benefit of sort of following the road. Uh, I'm gonna take my time today, a little bit more than I did yesterday. That fight, fight or flight mode that kicked in right off the bat yesterday. And I've told myself I'm gonna be patient, take a few deep breaths, get myself figured out, because it's a long day. Besides the mandatory emergency medical equipment, tracking, and comms devices, the survivor is carrying little to nothing. All he has is a compass, and he is given an azimuth to get him headed in the right direction. Got to get off the X. All right. After a quick loadout check, Bill decides that he needs to get moving because he knows Eric is coming in hot. Everything I see from here on out, potential enemy contact. Once again, this is some of the most treacherous terrain I personally have been in. And later on, the contestants agreed that it was pretty bad. Line of sight from the insertion point to the end point, it's about a 950 foot elevation change. However, they are going to be crisscrossing all throughout the AO. They have multiple spurs, draws, cliffs to deal with. So by the time it's said and done, Bill will have climbed a few thousand feet. Stopping off back in the woods. I got off the X, found a burnout tree. Try to use some of the ash to get some of the sheen off my face. I was moving roughly roughly 360 no i was moving probably closer to 320 so from here i think we'll cut north and then we'll cut off to the northeast and maybe another five or six hundred meters you know again not knowing where i'm at in relationship of distance I think it heightens that challenge uh, being able to plan a route. The only thing I know is I don't want to move in a straight line. We purposely do not tell the survivors the distance they have to travel. First of all, because we know they will not travel in a straight line and we can't predict the directions they will travel, but it's also part of the psyops of the challenge. A little bit of mind games and confusion goes a long way in making things harder for the survivor, especially in Bill's case, a very experienced outdoorsman. The hunter is allowed to use the roads, and knowing which direction Bill started off in, Eric seems to be fairly comfortable on what he has to do. Hey Bill, Survivor, you are not going to make it. And of course a little harassment in the form of PSYOPs makes everything a lot more interesting. 
especially for the scout and HQ team. Come to us, please. We are your friends, GI. Come to us. <laughs> so many false summits with these spurs that run in every direction. The only thing I know for sure is I need to move uphill ultimately. Another benefit to the trackers on the contestants is that we can otherwise leave them alone. And once we see they start to head outside the boundaries of the AO, we could just give them a call. Hey, Survivor, it appears that you are uh, about reaching your northern boundary. Other than that, they hear nothing from us. Roger, that's a solid copy. So Eric is hunting today, and he came out with a very solid strategy. He's like, I think he's going north. I'm going to haul ass up the trail and try to cut him off. And let's see how that's working out for him. So the insertion point's right about down there where our line started. Survivor just cut way up here due north. And there's Hunter paralleling the Survivor. It's zoomed out, so they're probably a good uh, two clicks away from each other. But um, at some point, the Survivor is going to have to cut east. And let's see how that works out for him. So what we're going to do is move up over here and then we'll cut to the northeast. In keeping with the cryptic style of military intelligence, when Eric's perk times come around, we offer him special guidance that he may not even know is a perk. Freaking, uh, he's got a really good strategy going, man. All right. Now that Bill has reached his maximum northern limit, he realizes he has to cut directly east. Welcome to the hell that is Manzanitas. Everything is a risk. These plants can become so thick you only have two choices. Bust through and risk them getting so bad you can no longer pass, or box around and possibly get lost or captured. Can't really use this to my advantage. Unless I just uh, squat home. We gotta cut them down a little bit. And try to work our back up. Every hour, the scout makes a pass through the AO to deter the survivor away from all the trails. And he also reports any observations over to the hunter to help him out. Hey, Survivor, we're coming to get you. <laughs> I have a feeling maybe he's on this side of the road. Maybe I could work my way down over there. Take a look. Eric has a similar strategy that Bill had yesterday. He is now between the survivor and the endpoint. So he realizes that all he has to do is sit in a good elevated position and let the survivor come to him. But survivor, don't forget how psyops work. Might not be such a good thing. My kit got a little bit of Bill finally digs through his survivor loadout and realizes that he has actual camouflage paint with him. Now he gets to add on to his improvised tree charcoal job and make himself blend in a lot better with the terrain. It's not just one person who's after me, it's basically four. And they know where I'm at, they know where I'm moving to. Eric has free maneuver using the roads, using resources he, he has that I don't have available. So I'm gonna squad hold here for a few more minutes, hydrate up a little bit. So we'll continue moving our way down and up. Barbecue up here. You're missing out. Remember now. You get some lovely food. We got beer. 
I need to channel a hunter. I need to channel something to help me find him. So, uh, if I can hunt like the spider, I have to become the spider. With things being a little bit slow, Eric also decides to camo up a little bit. He ends up with a pretty interesting style of camouflage, but hey, you know what? Everyone has their own preference. Hey, it's a uh, perk time, so be advised the survivor is on the move, and um, it doesn't look like you're gonna meet him if you keep going down that way. All right, I appreciate that. I'm uh, getting moving now. It's uh, finishing up my artwork here, so you'll see it in a minute. I hope you're impressed. That's your your last perk for an hour. All right, sounds good. I'll I'll be I'm coming back up in just a sec. Calculated use of perks helps keep the games rolling and make things interesting. Bill is about halfway through an 800 foot climb up a spur and it's always possible he might have to go right back down another draw or spur and make that climb all over again. The problem with traveling out here, especially while being hunted, is you can never just travel direct line of sight in one straight direction. You're going to have to box around areas, climb up elevation, go back down into depressions. With all that combined with the manzanita bushes and just dead trees being everywhere, it creates a nightmare for the survivor to travel. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, especially in the evasion world. And Bill is employing a lot of excellent tactics to avoid capture. One of them you can see here is he does not just walk straight up and crest a hill. Keep our shadows off to our left for a little bit. He actually hunkers down a little bit to observe everything over the hill before just popping his head up over it. A little bit. Stop and listen. Short security halt. He has no idea where the hunter or the scouting team is. Look around. Well, I expect the hunter is moving more carelessly than I am. There's the ATV. I can't tell based off the way the noise is moving. Wood side of town. We'll see if we can see. I see him there. Okay, that's good. So I thought it was closer than it was. That's good. That's good. He could have been on the ATV. Bill remembers that one of the hunter's perks is at least once during the 24 hours. He gets a free relocation anywhere within the AO. Bill also has no idea which quad is driving around the area near him. So he has to assume that every quad coming around near him could have Eric on it. As this spur is coming down, I think I want to cut around to the, the north side and then, and then back east. Definitely don't want to expend the energy moving up. Just behind the pine tree in front of Bill is the high ground where Eric is sitting in observation. There's plenty of ground between them at the moment, but it looks like Bill might be heading right for Eric. Pace count's wag, so I don't know how far I've traveled. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter until you get to where you're going. So let's get going. For now, Eric has the prime real estate. All he has to do is remain in position and let Bill come to him. The survivor has no idea where the hunter is, so Eric, as the hunter, could use that to his advantage and just hang out on the high ground. The funny thing about an event like this is it's not all insane excitement nonstop. That's especially true when you're dealing with someone who is highly skilled and trained. Bill is using all of his survival and evasion training and experience to be extremely cautious out there in the field. 
He is just too good at avoiding detection and capture. That means for the HQ team, we will have some downtime, and at times it actually could be a little bit boring. GI. <laughs> Did you say my generation is the impatient generation? <laughs> we hit the buttons a whole bunch. <laughs> I don't get it because you guys didn't grow up with this stuff. You guys should understand it takes a while. For the record, I am now the spider. So uh, I can hunt like the spider. <laughs> okay, everybody be advised the uh, hunter is now the spider. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after his first major climb of the day, Bill had to go right back down into the bottom of a draw. Now looking up, he realizes he has even more of a climb. The torture never ends for the survivor, as he has to avoid detection and capture by the hunter and his scouting team, and he also has to contend with the extreme terrain. Downside about drinking water. Makes noise. The good thing is, here it is not. It's not too dark. Recognizing Bill's skills and the fact that he hasn't been able to find him yet, Eric decides to head for higher ground and try to sit around the end point and hopefully ambush Bill later on. I'm going to head out there and if I can't get a better look. I feel that he's on that side of the bridge. I know from intel he was pretty much heading straight north. Um, and I think HQ is over there. So I've been watching a lot of this side of the mountain because he knows how tough it was for me coming up on that side. So I'm thinking maybe with his experience, he's coming this way. And uh, anyways, we'll go out on this, this out here and we'll get a better look of that side and this side see if we can't hear anything see any see any movement what do we have here look at that Eric has discovered one of my favorite secrets about this area. Let's hope we don't fall and break something. A long time ago, somebody started to build a little tree house and abandon the project. That's and crap. it still holds up fine and offers an amazing vantage point of the whole area. HQ, this is Spider come in. Go ahead. Hey, I'm at the tree stand here. I'm gonna sit and observe for a while and um, eat something. So just because I'm sitting for a while, don't think I'm I'm falling and I can't get up. Got it. Thanks. Got some MREs here. Protein bars. Ooh, beef snack. We all eat a beef snack. 
What else have we got? White chicken chunks. Mm. Cheese spread. Peanut butter. Tortillas. Ooh. It seems like Eric has found the perfect spot to hang out and have an afternoon snack and observe and see if he can spot Bill moving around. That's just one of the many perks of the hunter. While Bill works on his second big climb of the day, I have to figure out how to get a supply drop out to him and get him a little bit of sustenance. The really tricky part here is I also have to be stealthy so as not to get him caught on accident. I got some support coming in. Water, a little bit of chow, and some fresh batteries, which I desperately need. Sitting in a little ravine, just a small gully. So it's supply drop time for the survivor. Have to be a little different about getting his stuff to him. Um, park far away from him, take a different route to get to him. And once I get close to him, I kind of have to get down and try to creep a little bit. Don't want to give away his position, trying to bring him stuff. Once again, each contestant is carrying a tracker with them so we can safely identify their general location. The problem is with any kind of heavy canopy over either one of them, it's hard to pinpoint their exact location. So once I creep my way into their general area, I have them walk me in. Yeah, just keep moving forward. It has been four long, torturous hours for Bill, and just like Eric, all he gets is a measly power bar and a little bit of extra water. We also have to stock them up on their radio and GoPro batteries to make sure we don't have to keep coming out and finding them every hour. Because outside of some radio calls, the survivors are essentially completely isolated this whole time. I use this time to catch up with Bill and do a quick health and welfare check on him. I want to make sure he feels safe and supported by us and find out about any issues he may have that we haven't heard about on the radio yet. And so far, I can tell every time I come into the survivors, they actually enjoy a little bit of company before I leave them alone in the woods and on the run again. I don't know if it worked or not, but you know, everything's a gamble. Tough walk, huh? Yeah, not what he's dealing with. He's, he's in there. Shortly after meeting Bill, it's time to be his enemy again. HQ, do you have eyes on the drone? It's perk time for Eric and he has chosen the drone. It's different for him this time because he is very far away from Bill. So what I'm gonna do is hover around Bill to give Eric a general idea of where Bill might be. Also to harass the survivor a little bit. We're like discipline. Incredibly important. That drone over is looking for me. The quiet forest makes any sound seem to be a lot closer and louder than it is. That is especially true when you have a drone overhead looking for you. It's gonna be doing a box or recon or figure eight. Any movement at all. Don't give me away. It feels like it's super. Because Eric is so far away, I can actually bring the drone right on top of Bill just to stress him out a little bit. Fuck man, he's right there. Okay, well since you can't um, see it, I'm gonna hover right over him and piss him off. 
All right, sounds good. Over. He's probably really uneasy about that. Bill knows he is stuck in his position and cannot move, but he also doesn't know what Eric is seeing in reference to the drone. So this is a perfect opportunity to put some stress on Bill. He knows my general vicinity. So he has two options. Sit and wait, knowing I have to move towards him. Or close with. Which gives me two options. Sit, wait, hold up, keep moving the direction that I have been, or change routes. Don't exactly know. what his location is. The confusion that comes from simply not knowing is all part of the games here. The survivor is always left in the dark and they're never sure which option to take. Sounds like he's gone. Everything they do is a gamble. Just uh, count it as a Vietnam flyby. Bill is almost done with his second large climb. He has already climbed over a thousand feet today and he still has a long way to go. On the downside, a peak in this area doesn't necessarily mean the terrain will be easier. Even though it's clear now, the terrain can always change and Bill is about to see that. So here's the choice. Down. Cut it up. Bill recognizes that he cannot just walk along the top part of a spur in the wide open. That will definitely get him caught. He decides he's going to crest the spur and head down a little bit into what we call a gulch and deal with the manzanitas down there to avoid remaining in the open. now totally paranoid about which quad is driving through the AO. Is it a scout vehicle or is it somebody transporting the hunter for his free location? That's exactly what we want. Bill is now faced with one of his toughest challenges yet. Instead of risking going out into the open to be detected and captured, he has decided to plow straight through a massive cluster of manzanita bushes. Still getting through this shit now. This will be the thickest brush he has gone through yet. I'm in a pretty thick patch. I've been here for about five minutes. I don't hear any movement, but I know my movement is very loud. I'm gonna try to come back up and see if I can't skirt, skirt it and keep moving east. It has been a long, brutal day for Bill, but he has done a phenomenal job. He has kept Eric and the scouting team second guessing every move they made and kept them confused on which plan of action to take. 
Bill has used every tool available to him and all of his knowledge and experience, and he has successfully evaded detection and capture. As the sun gets lower in the sky, Eric is not sure what his next move should be or how he should even approach trying to capture Bill. As with any other complex operation, you eventually run into significant issues. Murphy is not taking a break today and we eventually run into a serious problem. Hey Survivor, this is HQ. Survivor, this is HQ, come in. How about you Bill, you out there? This is HQ, come in Bill. I haven't had contact with the Survivor in a while. We got him on the tracker, but he's not answering his radio. So as a survivor, it's possible he has it off, but we're gonna have to try to go find him and see where he's at. Survivor, this is HQ, can you hear me? Survivor, this is HQ, are you out there? Survivor, if you can hear me, I'm headed your way. I'm gonna head on out there to him and uh, make sure everything's all right. Will Bill be able to keep up his outstanding performance and evade detection and capture and reach the end point? And more importantly, is Bill even okay? Got everything we secured. Hey, Survivor, this is HQ. You hear the ATV running? Kind of carry this by hand. Try to help reduce as much of the noise as I can. How about you, Bill? You out there? This is HQ. Come in, Bill. I haven't had contact with the survivor in a while. We got him on the tracker, but he's not answering his radio. So as a survivor, it's possible he has it off, but we're gonna have to try to go find him, see where he's at. Not getting through that. Survivor, this is HQ, we out there? A lot of energy burned. They're running up and down that road. So I know he's up there somewhere. My only hope. Is that I can work my way out of this Mantica a little bit. And that he ends up This side of me, of the objective. It's just gonna be 10, 15 feet at a time. Survivor, if you can hear me, I'm headed your way. Even though it was tied down, that last rough patch of Manzanita has separated Bill from his radio. That's why we always have a backup system. I don't know if I had to guess you're doing a short halt to find me and get my radio. I heard him trying to call me. So just try to move into a concealed position. I'm gonna assume that any movement that I hear is not contested. Bill remembers from the briefing that in a situation like this, all he has to do is Charlie Mike. Right over here. And we will eventually find him and sort out any issues. You all right? Oh yeah. I uh, put everybody on pause. Yeah, no, I figured as much as soon as I realized that it was gone, I was like, I just get it close to the road as I can while being quiet and just hold up. We're still tracking you. So yeah, yeah, these. yeah. Hey, uh, HQ, this is Rover. Come in. <clears throat> Rover, this is HQ. Go. Yeah, I've linked up with the survivor. We have a uh, lost radio 
situation. A lost radio. A first sergeant lost the radio. Roger that. I'm going to activate the alarm. Um, just so you know, that's me. I'll see if I can find it that way. We're able to find it down there. <laughs> HQ, I I think I've located it. So um, let me get down there. I'll keep doing the alarm to walk into it. HQ, copy. Yeah, this is Rover on the Survivor radio. Are we good to go? You, you receiving me? I'm receiving you loud and clear, man. All right, we're going to make top here, uh, tie this thing down. So we'll be good to go. I'll let you know when I'm moving. Yeah, make sure he gets a bit of dummy cord for his radio. <laughs> yeah, he's laughing and shaking his head. He ought to be. The radio pouch we gave Bill doesn't fit on the Alice belt too well. So I tell Bill, this one is on us. We're not going to beat him up for it. And while I have Bill, I go ahead and ask him what his game plan is, continuing on. Um, gamble moving at night, but if I gotta stop for a minute, um, I will definitely move, hopefully at least half a cliff, click from wherever I stop. And so if it gets dark on you, you'll probably bed down? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I don't expect to be able to make any good time and if there's any kind of LPOP out there, then their senses are going to be a whole lot better than mine than any mm -hmm. de done, dead giveaways. So better hold up until first light. Maybe, like I said, move half a click at the most under limited visibility, but that's only to get away from the last spot from where I was at that somebody could have known where I was at. Does that make sense? Half an hour or so till the sun's below that ridge line. I'm gonna walk down there a ways. I'm gonna assume he's off the road somewhere. And I'm gonna get myself a little closer to not want to wait at HQ like a lazy man. Eric is tired of hanging out up at the end point, waiting on Bill to come to him. So he's going to move down the mountain and try to actually find him. You can tell that yesterday's events took its toll on Eric and he is tired of dealing with the terrain. So I don't know where he's at, but I know he's got decent access. I got to be super careful. Shadow's starting to get pretty long. I need to be mindful of that. That's an easy, easy target. Six hours into the game, Bill has covered a lot of ground, but he has only moved about half a mile closer toward the end point. He still has just over a mile line of sight to go, and as the sun is setting, things are about to get very interesting. Driver, this is HQ. HQ, send it. It's a solid copy. Out. Bill's last perk until dark is an intel update that the hunter is headed his way. Bill implements his slow movement plan early on. He's going to move a couple hundred feet, sit and wait, and then move again and try to keep doing that throughout the night. I think we'll just wait here. As darkness falls, it's time to call the admin halt where we make Bill perform survival related tasks just like Eric had to do. Once again, for these games, the two tasks chosen are build a fire and a survival shelter within 10 minutes. Hey Hunter, this is HQ. 
Hey HQ, this is Hunter. We're gonna go into the admin halt for the uh, for the craft stuff. So just hold your position for a while. All right, sounds good. Do you need anything while we're hanging out? His exact location might be good. Yeah, he's uh, northeast, southwest of your position. Oh, thanks, I appreciate the tip. Well, she said just give her the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. <laughs> there are dozens of survival shows out there and we wanted to be the first to truly implement evasion, escape, and add the physical component of being on the run. Therefore, when it came down to choosing survival tasks versus evasion or escape, we leaned heavily on the evasion part. And by choosing the two survival skills that each contestant had to perform, we were able to mitigate the possibility of them just ignoring survival and racing toward the end point. All right, so we currently have a admin halt, so I'm gonna take the opportunity put my sweatshirt on at least because I don't want to put my jacket on yet. Be too, way too hot. I'm still going to be walking. Unlike the survivor, the hunter gets to carry all the gear he could possibly need and he can also get any kind of support he wants from HQ or his scouting team. Somewhat warm. Well, we're having a admin halt for for him to set up his tent and have his little fire. I'm gonna eat these white chicken chunks. <laughs> I'd assume he'd mix this with some mayonnaise or something and make a chicken salad, but that's pretty good. We gave each contestant limited supplies to where they had to adapt to perform their tasks. And an admin halt ensured that both would get some kind of break and that also the survivor would not be captured because we made them stop and perform these tasks. The time of completion in these tasks would also be used as possible tiebreakers in the end should we need those. Once the tasks are complete, Bill can do whatever he wants with his remaining time. He can also use his shelter or fire or abandon them altogether if he chooses. In the first game, Eric chose to remain in the area where he performed these tasks. That caused him to be located by Bill as the hunter and get him captured. So we'll see if Bill decides to hang out where his camp is or continue moving. All right, good night. Bill completes his task with four minutes remaining. He has plenty of time to take a break, eat a power bar, exchange some batteries, and figure out how he's going to move the rest of the night. Been establishing a small fire. Building a temporary shelter. Definitely not gonna stay here tonight. Smell that smoke, and even though it's all out, Right over here. It's a known point where you were at. So you just want to pick up and move. Had uh, a little bit of pokey bait and some water. Hopefully that'll help keep core body temperature up. Bill has about 17 hours remaining and 10 of those will be under the cover of pitch black mountain darkness. Everything is much louder at night, especially on the dry forest floor. So Bill is going to have to be extra cautious. So, Randall, what is next? Well, it's getting dark and it's getting cold. As soon as that sun goes down, it drops about 10 degrees. So uh, now we just wait and see and uh, let the games begin. Let the fun begin for the night part. See how they do out there at night. We get to hang out next to a warm truck and uh, plenty of food. So, yeah, they don't. Been sitting in this spot for what seems like 
45 minutes or an hour, maybe more. So I think I'm going to hydrate up a little bit. Maybe try to move to another pine tree, sit underneath it for a little bit. Catch a little bit more rest. And then uh, probably just try to continue that as much as I can. Hopefully uh, he gets tired enough to try to crash out. Maybe I can hear him snore. <laughs> so I don't... You just got to be moving super slow because it's just so dry that any misstep is going to break a twig. So I think just try to move from tree to tree is about all I'm going to be able to do until we get some light. Hike down the road for a ways. He's in super stealth mode. There's no way I'm going to find him right now. So I came back up the road a bit. Not entirely sure he's going to come up the road. I know technically Randall says we're not supposed to, but I don't know how he can move in the forest this late at night. So if he decides to make a move sometime around one or two or three or whatever, just wait out the night completely. I don't know, but uh, I hike up the road here a bit and I turned off the road. There's a little motorcycle trail here that I was on earlier. I'm going to lay out this poncho, put on my snow pants, and uh, try and get some, get some rest, maybe eat something. It's a gorgeous night. So, Randall, what is that on your hip, man? Well, this is called a self-defense facilitation device. Um, you know... Just uh, in case the guy, they, the guys run into a big predator or something else goes south. Are the uh, contestants allowed to carry uh, a gun? Definitely not. We can't have uh, a hunter creeping up on a survivor at night and getting shot in the face. That'd be pretty bad. So what is there to prevent you from scaring a survivor or a survivor scaring you and you shooting a survivor or a hunter if he dies he dies <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>With this event most likely going all the way into the night and possibly the full 24 hours, the grunt proof team decides to start our rest cycle. Jeff is the most grumpy, so he gets to lay down first. Roy and I have first watch and we're going to go ahead and break out some of the materials from our sponsors and have a nice little camp out. So we're going to uh, go ahead and move to another tree, hunker down for a little bit. Eric decides to establish a listening and observation post not far from us. His idea is that Bill might try to stay close to us and just sneak around us in the woods. So Eric hopes to stay away from us and our noise and possibly hear Bill trying to sneak by in the woods. I'm gonna try and catch a little shut eye. See what happens after this. Maybe take another stroll down the down the road in an hour or so and see if we can't uh, spot Bill. I, I don't know what time it is. I hear some music playing. It's a little chilly. I suspect it's probably uh, upper thirties, maybe. So that's part of the, one of the reasons why I'm spending so much time underneath these pine trees. It's not directly underneath, it's going to be maybe five degrees warmer. So we are going to move a little bit now. It'll be slow and methodical. Maybe move uh, a few hundred more yards.
Bill has been implementing his methodical method of moving, halting, listening, and continuing to move, and he has gained a lot of ground since the sun has set. Eric has been laying down, relaxing, and hanging out with us a bit around the fire, and he has no idea how close Bill is to flanking us. To offset their difference in skills, during the day Eric got to use binoculars, and so it's only fitting that at night he gets a night vision device. Not too bad for a civilian device, but Eric needs a little bit of time to get used to it and learn how to use it to his advantage. I wouldn't call it sleep. <laughs> Got you. Are you uh, just relocating or are you actually moving up this way? I'm going to relocate for maybe another hour, but I probably am going to move another 100 or so meters before I bed down again for a long halt. Roger. Running all this for the last two days has definitely wiped me out. So with Bill saying he will lay down and try to catch some sleep, I decided to do the same for myself. Eric decides to use this downtime to do some foot maintenance. He did a lot of climbing yesterday while he was a survivor, and it took a toll on him. Not only did it beat up his feet, but it also seemed to mess with his morale a little bit. He really does not want to get into the Manzanitas anymore, and he is trying to avoid climbing down into depressions. One, because he doesn't want to expend the energy coming back up and fighting with the underbrush. He also doesn't want to risk getting down into a low area and having Bill outflank him, and then it just turns into a straight-up sprint to the end point. Shortly after 11 p.m., it's my turn to get to bed down. Things have been quiet for a while, so we decide to do one more comms check with everyone just to make sure everybody is good to go before I can lay down and finally get some rest. And as usual, Murphy is not taking a break tonight. Roger. It's about a uh, sit rep time. I just bedded down to get my rest, and uh, we got a lost piece of equipment. So um, it happens, but we weren't too far from a uh, hunter, so we had to try to keep our talk down, and I had to make sure we turned our radios off. So survivor's on the move again. He got some rest, and yeah. He's, um, looks like he might make a run for it. Um, so, might get interesting. I just laid down to get some sleep. Probably not going to happen. That's how it goes. Everybody is getting tired and grumpy, and you really hate to have issues like this, especially at night. But the funniest part of this for me is getting to wake Jeff up a little bit earlier than he was supposed to. I've worked with Jeff for over 12 years, and there's nothing more fun than watching him miss out on sleep and be grumpy the rest of the night. Even better, I get to make him set up his camera and record himself while he's half asleep and dealing with us. Yeah, we're gonna have to go into an admin hall. We have another lost radio situation. Oh, are you telling me that the first sergeant lost another radio? Roger that. Okay, admin halt. Absolutely incredible and unbelievable. A first sergeant lost a radio twice. I hear a damn thing this time. So either the battery's dead or uh, he had the volume way too low. I can't even see the LED light going off out there. 
well we'll keep looking and if it takes too long we'll just uh say we lost that one yeah i've got them in the front leading rest position while i set up this next radio <laughs> and when he gets tired have him roll over and he can do flutter kicks <laughs> I copy you loud and clear, Rover. Okay, we've got 90 mile an hour tape. Uh, we got 550 cord, and it's duct taped to him, so maybe we won't lose it this time. Hey, Rover, are you the one that duct taped it and dummy corded it, or was it him? I supervise this one. Supervision is absolutely necessary. To make things even more interesting, Eric was bedded down not far from our truck and heard the commotion. He also saw a quad roll down the trail in the direction of Bill. Eric decided to walk down in that direction to see if we might actually lead him to Bill. 20 after midnight and I came down from where I was sleeping, looking around. Maybe get lucky. The first one I gave you a break because the pouches suck. Um, the second one will will penalize you a little bit, so no extra time for you. I'm we get Bill squared away, and I remind him that the first one was a freebie, but I also go ahead and counsel him that this time we will penalize him for his mistake. Anytime there was an admin problem in the games, we would actually stop the time so it wouldn't count against the survivor. This time is different, however, since this was mostly on Bill. We are also going to give Eric a special perk for this later on. We're just not sure how we're going to do it yet. Just about an hour later, Bill is now way ahead of Eric because Eric followed us down the hill and just kind of set up camp down there. Bill is now only about a quarter of a mile away from the end point, and this is where we decide to implement Eric's special perk. All right, let's go. All right, one sec. Let me. I'm gonna insert you and uh, bump you in there. Sweet. He already had one free relocation within the AO, so I'm gonna go ahead and give him an extra one. And then Bill's next perk will definitely make things interesting. Hey, I'm gonna be getting you a. Uh your next uh, pretty big perk here in a second, standby. At just after 2 in the morning, 14 hours into the game, Bill gets a huge perk from us. I'm sitting up at the end point, which is the highest point in the area, and I'm going to flash my tack light in his direction. That's going to be his terrain guidance and basically a beacon to show him where the end point is in the dark. While that will be a major help for Bill, he also doesn't know about Eric's relocation and that now Eric is between him and the endpoint. Survivors HQ. Okay, your next perk is uh, terrain direction guidance. I want you to look almost dead east of your position. Copy. Copy, I see. Okay, keep focusing there. See anything interesting? Copy that. All right, HQ out. Survivor 2 is actually our admin, one of our helpers. And uh, Hunter's right next to him. And we sent a big message to our survivor for his terrain guidance. And uh, he's trying to find a way around them. Not knowing that Eric was just a few hundred feet to his east, Bill starts heading toward the end point, and as he begins to crest a hilltop, he actually runs right into Eric. Eric has heard him fighting with the brush below, and now the hunt is on.
hear him over there. I don't see him, but I heard him. Hey, Bill, you can just give up and come and drink beer and sit around a fire with us. All you gotta do is come to the megaphone or the light. It really doesn't matter which one. The backpacker can turn you in. Isn't it great? A backpacker beats the first sergeant. A backpacker and an officer beat the NCO. <laughs> Survivor, this is HQ. So far in this event, we have lost two radios, found one, but Murphy strikes again. Survivor, this is HQ. Come in. Now we have no comms with the Survivor, and we are no longer able to track him. How about you, Bill? You out there? Talk to us. The excitement of Eric stomping all around him and being right on top of him has caused Bill to dive into a very steep ravine. That means his tracker will no longer talk to the satellite, and we also cannot reach him on the radio. Get a little worried. Bill, you are safe. Please turn on your radio and contact us. Because he's evading and in a pretty serious situation right now, we can't uh, talk to him by the radio. He's probably got it turned off or got the volume down way too low. Because we haven't even been able to talk to Bill yet, this causes us to think something has really gone wrong. I am very close to breaking out the extraction kit, hoisting myself down this ravine and finding out what the hell is going on with him. Beforehand, I had instructed Bill on how to reset his tracking device. And while he's down in the ravine, before we get contact with him, he tries to do just that. In the pitch black, however, he accidentally triggers the SOS alarm. Bill finally hears us hollering at him and turns his radio on and gives us a call. It's now past 3 in the morning and Bill is so close to the end point, he can almost smell Eric's campfire. That's right, a campfire. At this point during the games, Eric has about had enough fighting the terrain, crawling through manzanitas, and trying to find the greatest adversary he has ever come across. Eric has chased Bill all over this extreme terrain for over 15 hours now, and it appears that he is just done with it. What's uh, 24 minus 9? You're asking me to do math, huh? Yeah. It's a survival test. Ah, oh, jeez. All right, so we got, we're, he's got nine hours left. Yeah. How are you feeling? This is your second event. Me? Yeah. Well, if I was hiking on the trail, I could probably do a several more miles, but... Uh, walking through manzanitas and stepping on uneven ground is is totally different. So I kind of feel like at this point, Bill has earned a uh, earned a win. Coast across the finish line. I think he's done a great job. I don't know how he got past me back back there though. No, actually, I do know how he got past me. You're right on top of I'm him. I'm stomping around like a big old bear, <laughs> making noise, giving him plenty of cover to get past us. So, yeah, I think at this point, if I mean the where where Bill's coming through, uh, I don't I don't feel like going down into that manzanita and trying to tr track him down. Um, so I'm 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 satisfied with my performance, and uh, I think it's uh, fair to to give him the win. There he is. I can see Billy's red light. Come on, Bill. You got this. Eric is actually seeing my red lens as I work my way out to Bill to meet him and come in for a possible win. It's been a long night and everybody is pretty much done. Bill is ready to do this. Here we are. It's been one hell of a long day <laughs> moving through some pretty thick nasty 
terrain, both vegetation and the terrain features themselves, up and down ravines, over and under brush, stops all the all the freaking time just to do sills and try to be patient. I swear to God, he had me. Light shining right down on me, but just still as a mouse for as long as I could be until I assumed it was safe to keep moving. Bunch of dog legs and getting lost and back found again, and you know, this is what it's all fucking about right here. Bill is a mere 50 meters from the end point. He's going to continue to follow the rules and not walk on the road, but all he has to do at this point is walk right into the end point. At the same time, all Eric has to do is stand at the opening of the woods and catch Bill. Given the circumstances and how well Bill performed and how Eric feels right now, it seems like it is a mutually agreed assertion that Bill is going to win this. Well, hey brother, you got room for one more? Billy boy, good job buddy. With eight hours remaining, awesome. Bill awesome. has won yeah. the first ever Rough Root Survival Games. He deserved the win, <laughs> You are awesome. Oh my goodness, what a day. My makeup is better though. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, awesome. What an experience, right? Yeah, experience of a lifetime. Hey, congratulations to yeah. the winner. Thank you. Freaking right on the man. man. I love it. You also kicked that, dude. Thanks, buddy. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Very impressive, man. Yeah, thank you. Bill, please uh, don't take anything personal that I may have yelled at you. Man. <laughs> appreciate it. So, I uh, feel like I was working with a lot of professionals, and if I can hold my own with some of those professionals, oh, man, you did I'm great. feeling good. So. Yeah. Well, not only that, but you scared the crap out of that professional. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I think you had him running or stressing out more when you were on top of him. Than yeah. he had oh, you. really? If there was a mine shaft out there. Bill would have jumped into it. I would have <laughs> jumped into it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were like ants on him. I think that ravine I went in was a mine like shaft. <laughs> yeah, I thought for sure when you're looking down at me in the gulch with your light oh, on this side. Yeah, not on that side. Oh. But when you came back around to this side, oh. I swear to God, you're like it hit me. But I was so far down, you, you probably couldn't see the... No. Nine months of planning from pen to paper up to the first insertion is now over. Everybody is relieved and ready to get some sleep. Right, so coming down into the games, uh, my reason behind it, I guess, at the end of the day is because, well, quite frankly, uh, I like to drink PBR and, and blow stuff up. The Grunt Proof Survival Games, the first ever SEER competition, is now over. What an adventure. Man, I'm still wondering why Randall threw me an invite to such an amazing event. I mean, I know I'm clearly awesome and he wants awesomeness for the very first Grunt Proof Games, but I come from the civilian backpacking world. Preparing for survival in my sport means having knowledge and confidence to traipse through the wilderness with enough food and gear strapped to my back to keep me comfortable. These military dudes, on the other hand, have prepared for worst case scenario, evade the enemy and survive. Well, whatever Randall saw in me, I think it paid off for everyone. It was a blast. Well, in general, I think it did pretty good. Uh, I came into this with fairly low expectations considering my lack of training. But I'm, I'm actually really happy with my performance though. I guess my goal initially was to move as quickly as possible and get to HQ before Hunter could catch me. Turns out that probably wasn't the best strategy. If I could turn back the clock I think it would have taken my time, a little more patience with the initial attack, and uh, more appropriate clothing, definitely a long sleeve shirt. So I guess there are a number of things that I'm glad while I was the survivor that I did not run into 
while working through the Sierra Nevadas. It goes without saying that I'm glad that I didn't find Eric. But truth be told, that was the least of my worries and concerns. I'm much more interested and happy that I didn't run into the Squatch. And even more than that, I'm glad I didn't run into Gene Simmons. Man, what a great and fantastic event the Grunt Proof Survival Games are. This is a perfect opportunity for somebody to get out of their comfort zone and test themselves and their mettle to see what they really and truthfully know. And this is the aftermath. This is what happens when you have a roving tonk and you pack it all up at 3 in the morning. <laughs> Mission complete though, nobody died. Alright, well, there's no uh, formal way to do this, um, obviously, but I just want to thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, um, really means thank a lot. You. Testing phase, and you guys uh, came out and weathered the storm. and. Because, I mean, it was, uh, as far as y'all's performance, it was above and beyond. So, I appreciate it. So, I just got a couple gifts for you guys. Yeah. Right but either way, yeah. thanks. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Man. Appreciate it. Very Coming cool. out. Jeff, you come down here too. Thanks, bud. Yeah. It was yeah. worth just being able to look inside your baby blues and say, right. it's the man, Randall, from YouTube. Baby blues or man greens? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> baby greens. Oh, yeah. Thanks. And, uh, of course, old Roy over there. Some of the supplies you guys used was from one of the sponsors, Survival sure. Box. You yeah. might recognize a couple things. Sure. They also sent out a whole bunch of gift boxes for you guys. Go, Bill. <laughs> Wait, I want mine to be open. Got you. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> but another company was Bigfoot Bushcraft. You know, fire starters. American company sweet. sent these out, so I wanted to send nice. you guys home with a pack. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Another thing, this is somebody very close to me. I don't know if you guys noticed the coffee mug I've been bringing yeah, out of, yeah, trying to show off. So we got a couple of those sent out. Oh, get out of here. That's you guys awesome. got some uh, Grump Proof, Grump Proof swag. custom mugs. Yeah. Oh, wow. man. Look at that. And uh, you got two sides to it. That is cool. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. America. So one more. Um, you guys noticed the beautiful, beautiful sign over there. You guys came out and rocked this. I made it. We got a special one made for you guys. Holy smokes! <laughs> so you guys are bona fide grunt proof survivors for attending the survival games. Man, that's awesome! Look that at this. No, awesome to you guys. Thanks, yeah. sir. Appreciate that. And we got, we got one for you too, Roy. Mm. Good. Oh, thank you. So another thing he did for us, we got some uh, little nameplates made up for you guys. Jeffrey, did we forget? Oh, you didn't do your selfie? I, I mean, got terrible one already. video, man. You don't Sorry. It's horrible. Okay, here is your nameplate, sir. Right? Thank <laughs> you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see you, Bill. Oh. Hey. Jeffrey Canan, the commander. Uh, say thanks to you guys because you guys also Aww. played a yeah. major role. So, oh well, thank you very much. Thank you, you made me cry. Yeah. <laughs> thank thanks you, for, baby. Thanks for everything you. you've done. Yeah, it's yeah. Awesome. I'm just stoked to have you guys out here. Yeah, stoked. absolutely. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll we'll chat about you know all the other stuff later. Oh yeah, this, yeah. This kind of no, it's looking great. Final gathering. Yeah, this was awesome, Randall. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's definitely been an opportunity of a lifetime. So thank you for the invite.
Yeah, in the military, we're kind of used to missing holidays. Right. So uh, when we planned on Thanksgiving, we figured we'd try to make it special for yeah. everybody. Stuff you guys before you went out to the field and right. try to make you welcome up here. So. No, absolutely. It's been great. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's we'll see. You. Yeah, thank you. Stoker, Coleman, and the Yeah, so we're here live oh. with uh, the famous Eric Coleman. Turn that off. What are we doing here? We're having a Dutch oven dessert. We're gonna get the coals started up here, and then we'll get over to the table and prepare this deliciousness. What's special about a Dutch oven? <laughs> Not the serious it's kind one. Of a, <laughs> it's kind of a, it's kind of a cowboy camping sort of uh, thing. I mean, people can, cooking their Dutch oven in their backyard, but it's just, it's kind of a, it's an oven. You can bake in it, you can stew in it, you can fry in it, you can make, use the lid as a, as a place to cook your eggs and bacon. So if you think of uh, cowboys out on the trail, I'm sure the cookies Hot. would use, uh, use a Dutch oven quite a bit. So. so why not call it a cowboy oven and be American? Jeff, why do they call it a touch, a Dutch oven? <laughs> I have, I have no, no idea because you're the according I've ever seen <laughs> it's my wife when she's pregnant. <laughs> we'll little, start over, sorry. Yeah. All right. So we're making this dessert called Little Jimmy's Camp Little Jimmy Camper's Strawberry Shortcake. So here we go, let's get it going. minutes just because when it's really cold outside I feel like that has an effect on how long 45 to 55 minutes but it, it might it'll be done in the morning yeah it's it's much colder <laughs> out here okay so here we are <laughs> this here we are the next night so 24 hours later yeah how are we doing it's it should be there we can give it a we can give it a quick look the more the ash the better Ooh. All right, it's getting there. Uh, all right, here we go. Big reveal. Ooh. All right. Yeah, it's yeah. it's cooked. It's, it's gooey. It's chewy. It's with fruity. The cabinet burning next yeah. to it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a fork meal or a hand meal? Well, that would be a it's a fork it's a fork meal. meal. Yeah, yeah right. it's pretty gooey. <laughs> And uh, not if I cooked it, it'd be a finger. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be nice and overcooked. It smells awesome. Yeah, it's wow. pretty tasty. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. All right. We'll get Well, Bill, would you do it again? In a heartbeat. That's great, that would too. I'm just glad to finally have somebody in the car with me after a long event <laughs> tell me they'd do it again. Right. Unlike my son, he generally says no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but love for you, Jake. Anyways. Yeah. Good times, that was a blast. It's always great when you meet folks and you end up finding a new brother in life that you know that relationship's going to endure. So, man, I appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you too, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Stay stoked. Oh, wait, that's a tag for your video. If you want to get stoked and mask your. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, right on. Thanks again, dude. Yeah. This is uh, freaking awesome, man. Really glad to have you guys. But, yeah. Appreciate it. Good Thanks to meet again. Y'all and yeah. 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 Get close and personal. And, yeah. All right. Another, another hand. That's right. Uh, <laughs> Have a good one, I'll have a good one. Thanks, man. 
All right, we're off. Adventure of a lifetime. We're technically That's superheroes. Right. We are. We survived in the, you know, the wilderness for for a day. Never mind the 20 years in the military and right. out and on the battlefield. This is where you test your metal. This is where you get tested. <laughs> That's right. All right, here we go. So, that is it guys. Bill is the epic winner of the first survival games right here at Grunt Proof. Hope you guys enjoyed the series. Thank you to everybody for the support and a major shout out to Bill from Stoker Matic, Stoker Craft, and uh, Coleman Outdoors. Eric, none of this would have been possible without my amazing team and definitely the participants. They, uh, they proved themselves this time. So make sure you like and subscribe. Follow me for more. Stay tuned for the next Grunt Proof Survival Games. And until then, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Out. Today's episode is brought to you by survivalboxes.com. They have gear, food, seeds, all kinds of survival things with a very affordable monthly subscription. They actually sent out a whole bunch of items to use as supply drops for the contestants, so make sure you go check them out, linked below. To go power solar systems for every budget for the outdoorsmen. We actually ran our entire tactical operations center, all electronics on their Balder system, and it worked perfectly. They are linked below. Go check them out. 22 Sierra Coffee. 22 Sierra is an American company that strongly supports veterans. They are linked below. 22 Sierra Coffee. Bigfoot Bushcraft. Their fire starters are amazing. They are wind and waterproof. The contestants actually use them during the games to start their fires and they work flawlessly. Bigfoot Bushcraft is an American company. They are linked below. Go check them out. Gotella GPS tracking. No monthly subscription, no mobile network needed at all. This is how we tracked our contestants out in the field, especially when radio contact was lost. Dixie Soul Creations, a southern craft and customization company. Everything from embroidery, t-shirts, drink containers, and other customizable merch. This southern homegrown company could do it all. Check them out. They are linked below.